Governor Saludo urges support to fight against crime. Anambra Broadcasting Service holds interdenominational prayer session in Orca. Federal Road Safety Corps plans to deploy 1,000 body cameras in 2023. Colombian president replaces security chiefs over corruption and human rights violations. Before the news in detail, here is a special message. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for you to, to turn around the maintenance of the Anambra State economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the tax ahead. Good morning. Welcome to the Breakfast News on ABS Television. My name is Priska Wanko. Governor of Anambra State, Professor Chukuma Saludo, has reassured of rehabilitating failed federal roads and constructing new roads in the state to alleviate the suffering of the masses. The governor gave the promise when he flagged the reconstruction of failed and flooded section of Ogidi Oka Onicha Old Road. Kamen House correspondent Eji Kabana has the details. According to the governor, most federal roads in the state are in life-threatening, horrifying condition, assuring that while constructing new state roads, his administration will continue to rehabilitate failed ones as it awaits intervention from the federal government on long-term basis. He explained that through saving of funds by his government, it has been able to reconstruct the federal road at Isuibu, boundary between Enugu and Anambra states as well as fixed the portion opposite Chisco Park on Nisha and promised to continue making such emergency interventions. So, uh, the solution is here and uh, we believe that in the next few weeks um, this problem will be over and the people will no longer get drowned here Amen. and the flooding into people's homes and uh, villages, displacing uh, our people and causing untold hardship on commuters on this particular federal road will be history. Uh, we will continue to partner with the federal government, but um, while we call on them to do the needful, we are not going to, you know, stand um, at Kimbo and watch our people continue to go through until they hatch. So, today we have come to flag up um, the, uh, the solution to this uh, intractable, seemingly intractable, intractable uh, problem that has persisted uh, for years and years and decades as it were. And to the glory of God, this shall be history in Jesus' name. The Commissioner for Works, Engineer Ifanyo Koma, who recalled that it is the first project the governor has flagged off after his inauguration, regretted that the perennial flood in the axis is not only peculiar to Gidi, but the entire state. Really, we would have assumed that it doesn't concern him. But because of his passion and the need to provide a solution to India Anambra in the bid to build a livable, prosperous Anambra state, he decided that this should be one of the first projects. Mr. Governor, we are happy and we are welcome. Traditional ruler of Ogidi, Iwe Alex Onido, and the host of notable Ogidi indigents and others from beyond attended the event from Ogidi in the Demili North Council area, AGK Abana, ABS News. Governor Chukumba Saludo has enjoined Anambra youth to synergize with his administration to reclaim the states and salvage their future. The governor was speaking at Professor Dora Akunyele Women Development Center in Oka during the 2022 International Youth Day celebration. Again, a government house correspondent, A.G. Kabana, has the details. According to the governor, his administration has comprehensive agenda for youths in the state and called on them to support his government in the fight against crime. The governor asked them to acquire skills and take advantage of all government programs to secure their future. The government has played a role. The future belongs to you. If you are indifferent, then groups and roads will continue to govern you. But when you are alive, at least you vote with your own babies. That's how part of how you take charge. Mobilize others to be involved. We can a 
new society is possible. A new future is possible. But only with their participation. Those who fail to participate lose their right to complain. Those who fail to participate lose their right to do what? But what we offer you, dear Nambra, is that this is yours. This government is yours. This is a government of the youth for the youth. The Commissioner for Youth Development, Mr. Patrick Agamba, was part of the ceremony which also had the former Commissioner for Basic Education, Professor Kate Omenoga, as the keynote speaker with various youth groups and organizations in attendance. This year's International Youth Day has the theme, Intergenerational Solidarity, Creating a World for All Ages. From Professor Dora in the Women's Development Center, Oka, AGK Abana, ABS News. Adam Prostate Commissioner for Women and Social Welfare, Mrs. Ifi Ubinabo, has reminded married and intended couples that violence cannot be used to solve any marital problem, insisting that tolerance and prayer are key to a successful marriage. She stated this while speaking to journalists in Oka following the clamor for justice for the late Mrs. Chideberi Iloka, wife of the suspended transition committee chairman of the Nwinot local government area, Mr. Mbazulike Iloka. Correspondent Joseph Ibocha filed this report taken from her. But who assured those glamouring for justice for the late Mrs. Iloka that the Governor Chukuma Soludo administration is out to ensure that justice prevails once result of autopsy held light on the actual cause of the death and restated the importance of premarital counseling for intending couples. She expressed concern that some people circumvent premarital counseling processes leading to broken marriages and sometimes homicide and call on churches, religious organizations and all relevant stakeholders to step up the process to help in addressing challenges in marriage, even as she called for a return to era when inquiry must be made before people get married. Uh, it's good, I tell our young men, that you can never solve any problem in marriage by beating your wife. If your wife, you think is talking to you, uh, is talking too much, why can't you, as a man, walk away? Just step out. By the time you come back, the problem must have been solved at least 50%. So there's no reason whatsoever for you to beat up your wife. When you think maybe you'll be seeing her, she's a strong person, you just ordinary slapping. You know that the, the, the environment, the society is so harsh now, but economically and all the ways. Pressure everywhere. So many people are suffering from high blood pressure without them even knowing that they're suffering from it. No shouting can even make somebody slump. Talk more of when you slap somebody that is sick. Not that I'm saying that the woman is sick, but I'm saying that beating is out of it. You can't solve any problem by beating your wife. For the sake of your own life, don't beat your wife. The commissioner equally acknowledged that about 30% of wives equally abuse their husbands physically, emotionally, and otherwise, often leading to loss of self-confidence on the part of men, and caution women against unnecessary influence from what she termed over-exposure. The Women and Social Welfare Commissioner noted that domestic violence also affects children negatively at homes and assured that the children, sexual and gender-based violence court set for such cases is on course to do justice to victims. I want to assure everybody that um, as long as the Anambra State Government is concerned that uh, the administration of uh, uh, Professor Sisi so Soludo that he has zero tolerance to this kind of story. There's no way this kind of uh, thing, if it is true at the end of the day, will be committed in uh, an Anambra state on our soil and the person will go scot free. So for some people that are already, you know, clamoring for justice, there must be justice at the end of the day. 
if the autopsy says yes, that the woman died out of violence. But if not, then, then it will end there. The Commissioner for Trade and Commerce, Honorable Obina Ngonadi, has called on leadership of ASMATA to be united in supporting and assisting the state government to accelerate meaningful development of the state. The Commissioner was speaking during a meeting with market leaders at ASMATA Secretariat on each year. Staff reporter Odina Kamulisa completes the story. The Commissioner who observed that the state remains the hub for promotion of trade and commerce in the country, reminded them to align efforts with the enumeration and commissioning of all the markets in the state in line with adding Anambra internal revenue services towards increased revenue generation for development of the state. He assured them of government interests for improved welfare, disclosing of government's plan to establish health facilities across the markets. Honorable Longona, they advocated stability and sustainable collaboration among the market executives, warned them to initiate peaceful resolutions on issues that might erupt within themselves without government involvement. Also cautioned against construction of illegal shops across various markets. He revealed that the state government have provided land for developers and expansion of markets. Speaking during the meeting, the Asmata President General Chief Ikechuku Ekwabalo, while pledging the total support for the Governor Saludo's administration in boosting the revenue profile of the state, observed the readiness to comply with government's directives that will assist in turning the fortunes of the state. On the issue of the demolition of illegal structures in the market, Chief Ekwabalo sought the approval of the state government on minor demolitions that would facilitate free human and vehicular movement in order not to displace the traders. So now I have to go to the solution of administration of the law. I am not going to say it. In a remark, the President General during the Materials International Market, Ogidi, Chief Jude Mwankwo, who spoke on behalf of the traders, appreciated the Commissioner for the visit, describing the traders as critical stakeholders in the overall development of the state. He promised to accord the Commissioner maximum support for a successful tenure in office. <laughs> When you say you the Honorable Commissioner for Trade and Commerce, they are put and I am very happy for that. And then the Igwa, the Igwa Anambra State, Fabiapa, Owala Anyi Fegasi, Mandai Mal, Mandai Amaro. Present during the meeting we are the permanent secretary in the ministry, as well as some traditional rulers in the state, in Onecha, Odenaka Nwolisa, reporting. Anna Prayer Broadcasting Service has organized an interdenominational prayer to commit the affairs of the establishment to God. The prayer, which was at the instance of the managing director, Sachiru Bidiobu, and the management team was led by Reverend Father Professor Bona Christus Mogo, Evangelist Boniface Mwabuko, and Reverend Chukwudi Mwachuku. Correspondent Kenechuku Chukwudi felt this report taken from her. It started with praises and adoration led by a musical group as staff sang praises and danced to worship songs. The managing director of ABS and convener of the prayer session, Sachido, said it is important to put God first in everything one does, which the Anambra State Government recognizes and instituted a prayer meeting weekly at the government house by different denominations. He emphasized that ABS is repositioning itself to be a media house that will run professionally, responsibly, and profitably. I want to put God first. We believe that in anything we do, in anything we do here, since we want to put God first, that Almighty God will take charge of all that we are doing in ABS. Especially as the governor has given us this charge, you know, to strive to build a media organization that must be run responsibly professionally and profitably. That's what we've committed into the hands of Almighty God today to direct our path. 
to be able to achieve. In his remarks during the prayer session, Reverend Fadu Mogo noted that it is important for Christians to worship God in truth and honesty and letting him be the foundation of their life, which he said would facilitate joy and progress, noting that a better media house is emerging under the new leadership and urged staff to be prayerful at all times. The New Testament face of ABS, the new face, the new face, the new ABS, the new ABS, the new, the epoch-making face, the award-winning face of ABS stations, Onisha and Oka, shout a better amen. Also speaking, Evangelist Boniface Mwabuko, who also led a prayer, explained that humans need to humble themselves before God while asking for his direction and grace in their affairs, and most importantly, restrain themselves from sin and evil. What we can do uh, as OBS, as a family, is when we humble and, uh, ourselves and face God, and ask God to direct us, ask God to tell us what to do, with humility without our own description. As God for creation, humbling ourselves means to committing about who we are, committing ourselves to God. Some members of the staff, including the Director of Administration, Lady Tina Ekenta, and Mr. Jude Mascot Obiagu, in their reactions expressed confidence that the prayer session will attract more progress in the establishment. The Director of News and Current Affairs, Mr. Gabe Opaleze, the director of programs, Mrs. Neka Ekunife, and host of others attended the session. The Federal Road Safety Corps has announced plans to deploy 1,000 personnel trained to handle body cameras nationwide. As a way of checking misconduct, grab to recording arrests across the nation within the next 12 months. The call spokesperson, B.C. Kazim, would confirm this to newsmen, noted that 200 trained personnel with body cameras controlled from a command center have been deployed since the plan was unveiled by the immediate past Corps Michel Boboye Oyeyebi last year. He added that 1,000 operators are currently being trained on how to handle body cameras and they would be deployed nationwide after the training said that 200 body cameras were deployed earlier and their accessories have been rolled out with one control center, adding that the platform will embrace the ethical imperatives of eliminating misconduct, both on the part of the operators and motorists. He also said the implementation of the platform would be in phases, adding that the agency had a target of three years for all these patrol teams nationwide to start wearing body cameras. Cummings West Africa Limited has launched a technical education for communities program at Jambosco Institute of Technology, Obosi, Dembele North Cancer Area, as part of its corporate social responsibility initiative. The TEC program seeks to equip technical institutions with capacity and equipment to deliver quality technical education to increase availability of multi-skilled technicians to drive industrial growth in global communities with a key focus to increase a female representation in technical fields. Staff reporter Odinaka Mwulisa completes the story. Addressing participants at the launch, the Vice President and Managing Director, Kumis West Africa Middle East, Mr. Terry Pemi, gave a brief history on the tech program which was launched globally in 2012 with the mission of training vulnerable youths with a view of gaining access to jobs in communities. He stressed the need to grow a meaningful generation and invest on the future of younger ones through market-relevant curriculum to occupy the engineering space, announced the partnership with Jobitech as the second in Nigeria and the 27th globally. You know, so we have all sorts of functions, from support function, finance, HR, but mostly engineering and field service technicians. So we have been around for about 103 years, and our ability to stay in business after over a century is really to be credited to our employee. Speaking at the event, the director of the Institute, Reverend Father Matthew Adeteloye, appreciated Kumis for the synergy and partnering other organizations in providing world-class learning environments for disadvantaged students 
assured that others will leverage on tech program to assess technical education. And then without technology, we are moving nowhere. And we see things we normally do with hand manually, now we are doing them with machines and all that. And that is the bedrock of what we are doing here, to prepare young people in order to be able to meet the demands of today in our world. Speaking on behalf of Onitra Business Community, the chairman, Kate's Associate Industry, Chief Ikem Osanampo, noted that the sustainable collaboration has positive and multiplier effect on the society, urging other industrialists to borrow a leave and invest in such laudable initiative. Earlier, the program anchor, Mrs. Ifeyuma Alex Anene, who highlighted on their role in community partnership, showcased some of the beneficiaries. In a lecture, a resource person and lead consultant of Tributary Initiative for Learning, Mrs. Enyola Adifoye, called on government to promote the role of technical vocational education training in nation building and empowering more institutions to close the skill gap, noting the low representation of females in the sector. In a remark, an outstanding female scholarship beneficiary, Ms. Anastasia Okamaka, spoke on the program value and urgent need for more females from the community to assess such opportunities. Responding, the Managing Director of Kumis, West Africa, Mr. Ukechi Igwebike, made a clarion call for effective collaboration among stakeholders to join tech partnership for sustainable economic growth. The, the basic goal is that these young people who otherwise could have graduated from different vocational programs without market-ready skills, that we give them more market-ready skills so that by the time they graduate, there will be competition to get their, get their service. So our facility, commissioning of electrical workshop, donation of tools for training and development featured at the launch from Joby Take Obosi or the Nakan Wolista reporting. Colombian President Gustavo Petro has named new commanders for the military and the police, saying he chose the officials because they have not been accused of corruption or human rights violations. Colombia and the National Liberation Army Rebel Group also took steps to restart peace talks. Colombia's security forces have a long history of corruption, scandals and human rights abuses committed during the country's nearly six decades of conflicts. Petro said his criteria for selecting the new commanders were zero corruption, zero violation of fundamental human rights. Petro, a critic of Colombia's military establishment and former member of the M19 Armed Group, promised during his election campaign profound changes to the country's security forces and he urged the new officials to protect life. Colombia's National Peace Commissioner Danilo Reda said that the government would take the necessary judiciary and political steps to make peace talks with possible with ELN after a meeting between the representatives of both sides in Havana, Cuba. England international defender Ficayo Tomori signed a new deal with AC Milan, which will help him on the Italian champions on the 30th of June 2027, the club announced in a statement. Tomori joined Milan in January 2021 after a loan spell from Chelsea, who played a key role in Milan's championship push after replacing Simon Keja, who suffered a season-ending knee injury in December. Milan begin their defense of the Serie A title on Saturday at home to Udinese. Remember, you can follow news and program on ABS in many parts of the world by liking our Facebook page at ABS Radio Television. Subscribe to our YouTube page at ABS Television or car follow us on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. Log on to our website at www.absradiotv.com. To end the news this morning, a recap of the main points. Governor Saludo has urged you to support the government fight against crime. Anapra Broadcasting Service has held interdenominational prayer session in Oka. Federal Road Safety Corps is planning to deploy 1,000 body cameras in 2023. Colombian President has replaced a character chiefs of corruption and human rights violations. Here is the special message. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra State economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the tax ahead. 
That ends the breakfast news at this time on ABS Television. Thanks for watching. My name is Priska Mongo. Good morning and have a happy Sunday.